Hello, my friends. Today we are going to read a story. I'm going to read it to you today because I couldn't find this story on YouTube. So this is an Inuit story. It's called Hide and Sneak, and it's an Inuit folktale. Hide and Sneak by Michael, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, Arvarluk Kasugik, and also by Valadiana Krikorka. Some of the words in this book are a big mouthful. There's more coming up. So hide and sneak. One fine summer day, Alishu, Alishua, Alishua said, I am going out to play hide and seek, mom. Her mother said, don't go too far away. And it Idrak might hide you, and if an Idrak hides you, no one will ever find you again. Yes, Mom, Alishua said, and went out of her tent into the sunshine. Tiny flowers covered the ground, and the water on the lake behind her tent was so still she could see the sky in it. A loon made a long V in the water as it swam on the lake. On the sea, in front of her tent, the floats on a net were lined up neatly in the still water. When all the floats are floating on the water, there are no fish in the nets. They were all floating. On a hill, an Inukshuk stood quietly, looking out over the land and sea. It had to stand quietly because it was made of rocks, piled one on top of the other, to look like a man. Elishua looked at it and wondered why anyone would pile big heavy rocks on top of each other to look like a man. She said to herself, I'll have to remember to ask my father what it is for. But of course, she forgot. She ran off to play hide and seek with her friends. Alice Shua loved to play hide and seek, but she was not very good at it. As she skipped along looking for a place to hide, a bright yellow butterfly fluttered by, and Alice Ua ran after it, yelling, Quitusik, Quitusik, Quitusik. That, of course, is the way you make a butterfly so tired it will fall down so you can catch it. But soon, Alice Ua got so tired she had to stop and sit down, and she forgot to hide. Alice Ua was not very good at hide and seek. When Alishua was looking for a place to hide again, she came to a pond beside a rocky hill. Tiny prickly fish darted across the pond floor and disappeared under the rocks. She stopped to take a closer look. There was a big black bug crawling along the pond floor. It looked like a beetle just meandering along on its short black legs. Then there were teeny tiny fish that she thought looked like they did not have any skins at all. She could see their skeletons and all their insides. They swam around just the same, without a care in the world. There were little round red bugs that moved about from here to there with no sign of any legs or fins. But she was most fascinated by the alicapalic, a tiny turtle-like creature in a fragile-looking shell. It had a pointy tail and swam along by tickling the water with the many fingers on its underside. Alishua watched these bugs for a long time and she completely forgot to hide again. And again, she lost her turn. She was not very good at hide and seek. Later, when Alishua was looking for a place to hide, she came upon a nest of tiny baby birds. <clears throat> the baby birds lifted their tiny beaks up to her and chirped, cheep, 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 cheep. Alishua got on her knees, puckered up her lips and replied, cheep, cheep, cheep. <clears throat> and from somewhere behind her, Alishua heard some whistling and a tiny voice singing, hide and sneak, hide and sneak, how I love to hide and sneak. <clears throat> Alishua looked around, but there was no one there. There were rocks and flowers and old squaw ducks on a lake, but they weren't whistling or singing. 
She scratched her head and went back to the little birds. She puckered up her lips again to talk to them, but behind her there was the little voice again. Hide and sneak, hide and sneak. How I love to hide and sneak. I hide and you seek. You won't find me for a week. Alashua looked around. She didn't see anybody, but she heard the whistling and singing and laughing like someone was having a good time. She looked and looked, and finally, behind a big rock, she found a tiny little man. He was dressed in a fur coat that looked like tarmesan feathers in summer. His brown legs were bare, and he had nothing on his feet at all, like a tarmesan in summer. He was very hard to see. She knew she had met an Ijirak, a hide-and-seek creature. A tarmesan is a bird and it can camouflage with its brown feathers. A little man laughed and cackled and danced as he sang his little song. As soon as he saw Alashua, he skipped away to hide behind a rock, but as he did so, he tripped on the rock and went tumbling along the ground. Alashua laughed and ran after him. He was a shy little man, but soon he began to play with Alashua. He loved to play, hide and seek, and he was very good at it. Al Alashua said, I am not very good at hiding. The Ijrak said, I am very good at hiding. Let me help you. Alashua thought, this guy is an Ijrak. And my mother said, if an Ijrak hides you, no one will ever find you again. But he is such a happy, fun, loving little man. Elves don't hide you forever. Leprechauns don't hide you forever. I think my mother is wrong. She said, okay. Alashua and the Ijrak skipped up the hill with the Inukshuk on it. As they skipped down the other side, the Ijrak tripped on a rock again and went tumbling down. Alashua laughed and laughed. He was so funny. They skipped and sang across a rocky field. They skipped around a lake. They skipped and danced through a big field of cotton grass. Finally, they came to a small creek with fish fins sticking up out of the water. As they stepped into the water to skip across, the fish jumped and water splashed everywhere. They skipped across and hid in a cave that Alashua had never seen before. Alashua looked all around. She did not have the foggiest idea where they were. She asked, where are we? I have never seen this place before. The Ijirak replied, we are in my special hiding place. Here, no one will ever find us. They hid. They hid for a long time. The Ijirak became the Ijirak beamed with pride at being such a good hider. Lunchtime came and went, and still no one found them. The Ijirak laughed and cackled and sang his little song. He was having a wonderful time, but Alashua was getting hungry. She decided that no one would ever find them again and that it suited the Ijirak just fine. She said, I want to go home now. The Ijirak replied, but they haven't found us yet. I am hungry and I want to go home now, Alashua insisted. Well, you can't, the Idrak said, getting annoyed at Alashua. Alashua wanted to go home. She was getting awfully hungry and now she missed her mother too. But the Idrak was not going to let her go home. Then she had a terrific idea. She looked straight at the Ijirak and said to him, You look funny. The Ijirak looked at her and said, Don't look at me. But Alashua kept straight on staring at him. Your nose is crooked, she said, teasing the Ijirak. The Ijirak's face turned red. He was so shy, but Alashua kept staring straight at him. She could not look away now. If she did, she knew he would disappear. Don't look at me, he said again. 
You're a clumsy little oaf, always tripping over things, she said. Don't stare at me, he said. His face was red hot. Only if you take me home, she said. No, he said again. Red face, red face, reddest in the human race. Na, 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 na. Alishua teased. Well, the Idrak was so shy, he could not stand it any longer. He said, okay, I'll take you home, but don't stare at me anymore. They left the cave. They skipped along again until they came to the tiny creek. There were the fish again, with their fins sticking up out of the shallow water. Even before her feet touched the water, Alice Ewan knew something was going to happen, but it was too late. She did not dare take her eyes away from the Idjarak. They jumped into the water. The fish jumped up, splashing water everywhere. The water splashed on Alishua's dress. It splashed on Alishua's hair, and it splashed into Alishua's eyes. Alishua blinked. When she opened her eyes, the Idjarak was gone. Poof! Gone! Just like that. Alishua looked around, but the Idjarak was nowhere to be found. She looked everywhere. Still, there was no Idjarak. Alishua was alone, and she didn't know where she was. She was lost. Alishua began to cry. Ah, I want my mommy. Ah, I want to go home. She cried for a long time, but no one came. She cried until her eyes turned as red as the Idjarak's face. She cried until she had no cry left in her body. Then finally, she stopped crying. Alishua didn't know what to do. She looked all around, way, way far away. So far away, she, couldn't, she could hardly see it. There was a black dot on a hill. You can see the black dot right there. It was the only thing she saw on the horizon. Alishua wondered what it was. She said to herself, I am going to go there. She started to walk. She walked across a field of cotton grass. The black dot on the hill looked a little bigger. She skipped around a lake. Now the black dot on the hill seemed to be standing. She skipped and danced across a large rocky field. Now the dot looked like a man standing on the hill. She went up the hill and walked over to it. It was an Inukshuk, standing quietly, looking out over the land and sea. She said, I have seen this Inukshuk before. She looked around to where the Inukshuk was looking. There was a river, there was the sea, and the land, and way down on the shore, there was a tent. She looked and looked at the tent. It was her tent. She was so happy. She said, thank you, to the Inukshuk, and skipped and ran all the way home. Her mother and father and brothers and sisters were so happy to see her. They hugged her and kissed her and asked, Where have you been, Alishua? We have been worried about you. On the other side of the hill, playing hide and seek, she replied. She told them about playing hide and seek. She told them about the Idjarak, and she told them about being lost. Then she asked her father, Father, what is an Inukshuk for? To help you find your way home, he replied. She said, you know what, father? It works. When Alishua saw her friends again, they said she was such a good hider. They had looked for her everywhere, but they could not find her. Alishua was pretty proud. She still loved to play hide and seek, and she still was not very good at it, but she really didn't mind. There were always butterflies to chase and tiny bugs to look at. It was fun anyways. And she always sang a little song. Hide and sneak, hide and sneak. How I love to hide and sneak. I hide and you seek. You won't find me for a week. And she never ever saw an Idjarak again. Idjaraks are hard to see, just like Tarmajan in summer. And there's the Tarmajan birds right there. And so that was an Inuit folktale. What do you think the lesson is there?